Hello and welcome to DW Kit. In this tutorial, we'll create a business flow. First, let's clarify what a business flow is and how it differs from the workflow from the previous video. A business flow allows you to show a particular form to specific users at any given step of your workflow. For example, a manager and accountant will see different forms within the same workflow using the same business flow link. This makes the process handling system more personalized for every user without making the entire system more complicated. A business flow combines user forms, security scenarios, and workflows. It'll be of help if you're creating a system that should be aware of a user function to show a specific form within a specific process. Go to Business Flow in the main admin menu on the left. Here you can create, delete, and see the list of business flows in your system. Let's select this business flow to see how it's wired. Each business flow has a name, a workflow scheme that it's linked to, and a default form that'll be shown if there's no mapping for the current case. These are the main properties of a business flow. Next is the mapping section. It binds a workflow state and a user role to a specific form. You can select multiple states and user roles, as you can see here. While mapping, you can explicitly specify states and roles, or select indefinite values, such as any state and any role. Which form will be shown is determined by priorities that are quite easy to remember. First, the highest priority is set if both a state and a role are specified. For example, in state 2, the manager will see the document manager form. Second, the state alone has a higher priority while the role is set to any role. This column goes first because a state is more important than a role. In our example, in the initial state, which is start, Everybody, including admins, will see the document underscore draft form. Third, if we select any state, the role has priority. In the current mapping, admins will see the document underscore admin form for all states other than start. For all other cases, the default form will be used. A regular user in the second stage we'll see the document underscore view form, which is the default. We'll demonstrate how this works later. Right now, let's look at the form alternatives tailored to each user role. From the admin panel, let's go to forms and look at document underscore draft, document underscore manager, document underscore view, and document underscore admin. We've already created them off-screen, so let's have a quick look at the changes. Ultimately, these are just modified copies of the document form we were working with before, with minor differences. By the way, not all the priorities and links are copied along with the form. Don't forget to copy action handlers and data map bindings, link new forms with the same workflow, and add security records accordingly. Each document has its own header, so it's clear what form we're looking at. Document underscore admin is our full form with all viewing and editing capabilities. It's still intact from the previous tutorial, but for more clarity, we've added a caption to this form. The document underscore draft is shown to all users at the very first state. This form doesn't have the set state button in the workflow bar. If we go to these settings, we'll see that the set state feature is blocked on the general tab. Next, document underscore manager also doesn't have a set state button. Additionally, all fields except for comments are set to read only. In this example, the common scenario is for managers to inspect documents. Document underscore view still doesn't have the entire workflow bar. All controls are read only, and document details are hidden too. 
The business flow entry point will be the document grid that we've seen in our previous tutorials. Let's open its settings and switch this radio button from form to flow. Now let's type the name of our business flow, which is test flow. Similar to the form name, the business flow name will be used in a URL to open it. Now when a user interacts with this grid, it'll address a business flow instead of opening a form. For example, when a user creates a new document, it'll be connected to a business flow. And when another user opens the created document, the respective form will be shown. Now let's test two roles, manager and user. By the way, we've added two users for this demo beforehand. For more clarity, their names include the respective user roles. For these users to function properly, we need to set permission sets for the new forms that we've created, and allow new users to view and edit the forms. Now that everything is ready, we can test out our business flow. As we mentioned in the beginning of this video, different users will see personalized forms using the same business flow link. To imitate a random user's computer, we're going to use an incognito browser window. Let's log in as a regular user first. Open the document grid via the following link, forward slash form, forward slash documents. Note that we've opened a grid form, not a flow. This grid is just an entry point, not a part of the flow. Click Create and keep an eye on the URL to see how it changes. It now contains flow and not the form as in the previous video. From this moment on, we're working with the business flow. This starting state is Start and the document underscore draft form is shown to all user roles because everybody should be able to create a document. Fill in the details and click Start. This will execute the first command and the document will be transferred to the next state. You can see that the process state has now been changed to State 1 and the form has been changed to document underscore view. In this state, a user cannot perform any actions other than viewing the form. Once the business flow is created, it's assigned with an ID that's added to the end of the business flow URL. By the way, this is the same ID as the process ID, and it matches the link document's primary key. Another user can access it by this direct link or by selecting it in the document grid. Let's copy the link. Now switch to the Manager User role to see how this business flow appears to this user. Paste the link in the address bar and go. As you can see, the manager sees a different form as referenced above, but it works with the same document's data model. A manager can edit comments so let's add a few words about this process. Click Save. A regular user will see these changes, but won't be able to interfere. If we switch back to the user window and refresh the form, we can see that the comment has been added, but we can't change this field from this window because the document underscore view form is read only. Finally, let's go back to the primary browser window to test out how the admin user will see the business flow. Paste the same link in a new tab and go. Here we can see the document underscore admin form with full functionality that lets admins open it in the process viewer and redirect the process to any state. We hope this demonstration wasn't too overwhelming, 
and you won't confuse a workflow with a business flow. Let's quickly run through the key differences. The workflow doesn't determine the form that will be shown to a user. The business flow determines which form will be shown. In a workflow, the form is primary. In a business flow, the form is secondary and the algorithm selects one for each case. Before we end this video about the business flow, we'd like to tell you more about programmatic customization above and beyond the admin panel interface. The system is open to tweaking, so you can develop even more advanced and custom scenarios. For example, the system can show a specific form depending not just on the user and workflow state, but on other parameters, such as time elapsed after creating a process, etc. Please refer to User Interface Controller, particularly the method GetFlow. The method parameters are the name and the filter, same as the document ID. Feel free to make any changes to this method if your business task requires customization that can't be done in the admin panel of DWKit. Actually, you can control your business flows with any system parameter you can think of, so the sky's the limit. Now you know pretty much everything about business flows, and you can create quite an advanced system that operates maintains, and automates your corporate business processes. Thanks for watching our tutorial. This video concludes the overview of DWKit's basic features. In our next videos, we will delve deeper into the details and review more specific cases. Give this video a like and subscribe to the OptimaJet channel to stay up to date with our latest tutorials.